Okay. All right. We are recording. All right. Welcome to uh, November 4, a uh, special meeting of the Amherst Conservation Commission. Um, the only item on our agenda is um, to issue an order of conditions for proposed um, residential home at proposed residence at uh, 2 Canton Ave in Amherst, Mass. Um, Aaron, do you have the proposed orders on a slide? Hold on, this is a little weird. I'm not used to doing this from here. <laughs> You're okay. actually at your computer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm used to being remoted in, so everything looks a little different. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll just, let's start by talking about the, the mitigation because that was at the last meeting, um, the discussion point was how much to require for the mitigation. Um, we had asked Mark Stinson to come up with a proposal which he submitted to us. Um, the proposal for the BVW fill, which is like 100 square feet of BVW fill for the driveway access, he proposed $1,500. Hey, uh, and then for the um, proposed buffer zone mitigation, he had proposed um, $1,092. And um, with the noted um, plantings here on this plant list, and as Michelle noted during the hearing, it was like a plant list that had had an old um, date on it. And so Michelle had asked them to get an updated um, quote so that we were solid on the plant numbers. So wow. they came back with two um, estimates and one was Amherst Nursery for the all the same plant listings and that came out to two thousand and eighty four dollars and then they had an alternate estimate which was from new england wetland plants which had which didn't include the arborvitae and it only included four red maple versus the six um so the plant list wasn't apples to apples for comparison what i did here just because i was trying to break the difference was to say the original estimate plus the Amherst nursery estimate divided by two and where did that get us and that's this 1588 so I was just trying to kind of like wrap my mind around it and what we were asking for um, it's really at the commission's discretion in terms of what you want to ask for for mitigation contribution but because Michelle is Michelle has been really uh, awesome in assisting with us trying to come up with sort of a mitigation calculator that we can use in the future um, on projects that where we can actually plug in the numbers that are specific to a given project and come up with a calculation for an in lieu contribution to the wetland mitigation fund. Um, since we're not there yet, we were trying to come up with like a fair middle ground for this specific application, which is unique. Um, and so that's, that's where we are today. Um, so I think we should discuss what the commission thinks is fair by way of the contribution um, before we get to the actual like list of conditions in the order. Yeah. I mean, I think that the Amherst Nursery updated quote that Mark submitted should be the minimum for the buffer zone mitigation. So I'd say the total we should suggest is the 1500 plus 2084. Um, Because I mean, plant costs aren't going to go down. So if we want this amount of plantings, I think we should go with the most realistic and accurate estimate. Um, I also think that that amount, total amount of money is not too much to ask given what's going on at the site, the scale of the project, etc. But I'm interested to hear others' opinions. 
I agree with that. I mean, it seems pretty straightforward. <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, it. What makes sense is to go with uh, with prices and uh, and such that are available today uh, as uh, as a whole, and not you know. Uh, not cut it, you know, not cut it down by, uh, by whatever the original estimate is and uh, not take into account uh, a partial, uh, uh, partial estimate. So I agree that uh, the Amherst uh, nursery, updated Amherst nursery prices should uh, prevail. I also agree that we should um, use the updated nursery prices and what we asked was just the update of the current cost. So that's what that is. Um, I guess one of the bigger, qu bigger questions I have here is, um, or concerns is that because we are hopefully transitioning to a more standardized way to calculate in lieu fees that we, is it possible to consider this as sort of our, you know, pre predetermination to that so that this is not going to be some kind of, um, precedent or benchmark that's going to be used in the future. And I bring this up because, you know, as far as like typical and, and accepted in lieu fee programs go, there's many costs that aren't included in this. Like, for example, the taxes or the fuel to pick up the plants or the delivery fee or, you know, the contingency on the arborvitae if the deer eat them in the first few months. Um, you know, the time to water them for a few weeks, the labor to dig, well, I guess the digging labor is there, but not necessarily the fuel. So, you know, in short, there's a lot of prices that aren't included in a typical in lieu fee, which essentially is the transfer of the mitigation responsibility to the entity, which is us. So I think at the minimum, we should take the maximum of the quotes. And I just hope that we can soon segue on to a more standardized way of calculating this with agreed upon cost items. Point taken. And I think for the record, we should say that this case is not, is not to be used as precedent for any future in lieu cost estimates for mitigation, um, mostly because the permitting process for this particular project is extremely abnormal um, and didn't follow kind of the normal um, kind of workflow. And so um, in order to, you know, meet our responsibilities of moving through the permitting process and closing this, this order of conditions, we need to keep moving here. We can't delay further in order to establish our um, mitigation cost standards, um, but it definitely should not be used as precedent for future mitigation cost estimates. If anyone has a better way I of concur. saying that, <laughs> please go ahead. Yeah, and I'll make sure that the minutes for the this session reflect the, what the statement Great. that you just made, Jen. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. Or something more articulate if anyone wants to take a crack at it, but I just... <laughs> <laughs> want to put a tie a tie a knot around this that this needs to for many reasons this needs to be done um so we cannot delay in order to establish better standards but it should not be used as precedent for future um cost estimating for contribution to the wetland mitigation fund in lieu of actual replication or mitigation okay. another way you could include yeah Sorry. Another way you could include that in the record is to actually include it in the motion to state that in the motion that's made for the approval, um, but absolutely we'll include it in the minutes regardless. Okay, thanks, Aaron. All right, so I feel like we have consensus on this cost. So the cost would be um, if we're if we're adding the fifteen hundred to the two thousand eighty four, the um, contribution would be three thousand five hundred and eighty four dollars um, to the 
wetland fee, uh, the wetland um, mitigation account. Great. You have that in the bottom as a placeholder, Aaron, number seven. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Sorry, I'm a little. Um, Friday. I know. <laughs> TGIF. Okay, there we go. So do you want me to just run through these? I don't know what the easiest way to do this is. Um, yeah, why don't you do a run through, Aaron, and then we okay. can reference your run through in the motion. Let's okay. Go. We can move on. Um, so yeah, our standard boilerplate state and local conditions, including but not limited to pre-construction meeting, erosion control inspection, site monitoring for the life of construction until fully stabilized. Permanent demarcation of the limit of work line with boulders must be completed prior to any work beginning. They also had proposed putting in signage, like a permanent signage. So um, this could be boulders or the signage that they proposed. Um, but the, the signage, they wanted to use the signage particularly along the driveway um, because there's not very much room. It's like really tight to the driveway. So they wanted yeah. to use signage along the driveway. I remember this. No vegetation uh, removal is permitted outside of the limit of work line. Oops, sorry. Um, site monitoring by a third party competent professional wetland scientist during construction phase from groundbreaking to final stabilization with erosion controls uh, when erosion controls are removed. So for the entire life of construction, they'd have to have it monitored until I do a final inspection. Inspections shall include photos of the entire site, entire Erosion control boundary recommendations for maintenance and repair. These reports must be submitted in an informal or may be submitted in an informal email format. Erosion control monitor must be approved by the Conservation Commission and Wetlands Administrator prior to the start of work. Included that because we've had some issues recently with people wanting folks who aren't really competent and it's become a problem. Erosion controls must circle entire work area, not just on the east side of the driveway along entire erosion control boundary staked straw bales must be used from road pavement on the north side of the road uh, to pavement on the south side, along with orange construction fence to demarcate the limit of work line clearly. Uh, at the close of work each day, a straw wattle or straw bale line must be used across the driveway entrance to prevent sediment from leaving the site through the driveway access. This is mostly because I don't want, it's like, a, a safe to fail measure. I don't want them saying we didn't see the limit work line and drove over it. The orange construction fence will will keep them in in the site. Thirty foot stone construction entrance used at the driveway apron with three to four inch riprap used as a tracking pad to prevent sediment from being tracked in the roadway. Wetlands administrator will have a sign off on the order of conditions indicating work may begin following the pre construction meeting and erosion control inspection. Contractor shall sign the original order of conditions in the presence of the wetlands administrator, acknowledging that they've read and fully understand all requirements. If runoff is documented coming off of this property during or after construction, the site will be considered out of compliance with the order of conditions. This entire lot is within the buffer. Only native plantings may be used on this site, including landscaping in perpetuity. No additional wetland or buffer zone alteration is permitted on this lot in perpetuity, and that's an ongoing condition in the order of conditions. Any condition in the order of conditions, if any condition in the order of conditions is not adhered to, the property will be subject to an immediate cease and desist order. Plan set must be fully adhered to. Any changes to the plan must be approved by the Conservation Commission. No activity may proceed until the applicant has received all other permits required by law, including but not limited to any permit required by health inspections, built uh, planning board, zoning board of appeals. Before any site work begins, the applicant shall record the order of conditions at the registry of deeds and submit proof of recording to the Conservation Commission. And the commission is requiring $3,584 contribution to the wetland mitigation fund to compensate for the proposed impacts. <laughs> Whew. Okay. Um, so we need a motion and it's at the bottom of the slide. All right, I'll make a motion uh, to issue an order of conditions with the above noted conditions for lot two, Canton Avenue, DEP number 089-0704 with the noted special conditions 
And also noting that this shall not be a precedent for uh, future cases. Second. The second for Michelle, voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Andre. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. I'm also an aye, unanimous. All right. That's it, right? We did that's, it. That's it. You guys did it. Okay. All Everyone, right. thanks for making time for this. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. To adjourn. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for working with me, guys. Sorry about missing last week, and thanks for being on the schedule for today. No, no this problem. is great. Be, car be careful out there. Where are you? Yeah. Uh, Montague Sandplains. Ooh. Yeah. We yeah, we got fire on the ground and I'm supposed to be the holding boss, but hey, it's all right. I got some good guys with me. I've been hearing about um, Should I make a motion to adjourn? Dog. Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Andre. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. I'm also an aye. Thanks, everyone. Okay, guys. We'll see you next right. week. Thanks. All right, take Bye. care, guys. Bye. Bye.